Today we're reviewing the 1982 Porsche 911 Turbo, better known as the 930. Welcome to the Porsche Review. My name is Javier. Let's get started. In my 911 naming video, we stated that the 930 was produced from 1975 to 1989. The turbo was at the top of the 911 model line and that continues to be true to this day. The birth of the turbocharged 911 came as a need to comply with regulations for the 1976 racing season. This car became very popular and was marketed as a street legal race car, like the 1973 Carrera RS. There are two engines for the 930, the 3.0-liter and the 3.3-liter. The 3.0-liter was made until 1978, and the total output for this engine was 256 horsepower and 243 pound-feet of torque. To ensure that the 911 platform at the time would, could withstand the increase in power over a base Carrera, the car was fitted with a revised suspension, larger brakes, and a stronger gearbox. Enthusiasts were angry when Porsche made the 930 a 4 speed when a 5 speed was available in a base Carrera at the time. A whale tail rear spoiler was also installed to vent more air into the engine and create more downforce at the rear. This is probably my favorite feature of the 930. Wider rear tires were also fitted and combined with flared wheel arches. All this made the car more stable. The car was very fast but proved very difficult to drive and it made it prone to oversteer and turbo lag. So what did Porsche do? They added more power. In 1978 came a significant change to the model as the engine's total displacement was increased to 3.3 liters. And Porsche added an intercooler which increased power to 296 horsepower and 304 pound-feet of torque. The car in this video is an 82, so this model has a 3.3. The whale tail was reprofiled and raised slightly to add room for the new intercooler. The suspension and brakes were upgraded as well. The new brakes used were like those of the 917 race cars. While the 3.3 refresh did bring an increase in power, all the changes made the car heavier and proved to have a substantial change in the handling and character of the car compared to the 3 liter model. The 930 continued to have an interesting heritage in the line, as it was pulled from the markets in 1980 in Japan and the US due to emissions regulations. Then, about 5 years later, the car was reintroduced with a new emission controlled engine. At the time, Porsche introduced the Targa and the Cabriolet variants for the 930, which proved to be very popular. During the period of time the 930 was pulled from the markets, it was still available in Europe with a performance option on built-to-order cars that bumped the engine to 330 horsepower, a four-pipe exhaust system, and a remodeled front spoiler with additional ventilation holes in the rear fenders and the rockers. These specific cars are very rare but are awesome to see. In the late 70s, car customizers began to modify the G-Body 911s with the 935 slant nose. People were in love with the styling and Porsche noticed this and they began to offer a factory slant nose option to the 930s in 1985. Each one was handcrafted and is a well sought after car bringing in big premiums. I love the slant nose and it really shows that Porsche isn't afraid to do something daring while still listening to its customers. Performance on the 930 is very good, with all variants reaching 0-60 to in the high 4s, low 5s, depending on the year and the version. The styling of the car is very 80s and the interior is very 911 too. I love the boxy look of the car and the car is becoming more collectible. People really want these cars and they're shooting up in value. There are still some bargain G-Body 911s out there like the SC, which is basically the base model, and the rise in popularity of the Safari 911s are also contributing to the rise in prices, as the G-Body is the car that is used for this. Overall, I believe that if you can find a good G-Body in great condition, it would be a very rewarding car for years to come. Thank you.